Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern14.com here to talk about games in SEC basketball on Wednesday night, February the 16th. We'll go in order of tip-off. First one, 6 Central, LSU and Georgia. That one in Baton Rouge. LSU about a 19-point favorite, according to Ken Pomeroy. We're doing this Tuesday morning, so no lines out yet. Blake, your thoughts on this one? I mean, it's another Georgia game. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> You say that with such gusto. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> at this point, you know, it's um, pretty – pretty easy to figure out who we're probably going to pick to win this game I guess it's just a matter of seeing how it plays out but yeah I mean it's LSU as I said I think if at full strength uh, I've said it all year uh, you know they can certainly push to be one of those top four teams in the SEC somewhere in there Um, and and yeah I mean their record may not reflect that at six and six but they're just a different team with everyone out there as as most teams are you know when you have your best players you're a different team and now that they're getting their best players back on the floor, I think that it's just, um, you know, it's a different scenario now. So, I mean, a game like this, clearly LSU, um, this is probably as one-sided of, an, of a defensive game we've seen in the SEC all year long since LSU is still statistically the best defensive team and George is the worst. So I think that's certainly something you look at here and wonder. Um, I guess the good thing for George is, LSU still not just, you know, that overwhelming offensive type team as they were last year. So that is at least something, I suppose, if you're trying to find something on Georgia's defense, um, maybe they won't give up as many points as they do sometimes, but I just don't really, I don't see a path to to victory here for Georgia. Uh, I don't even know where you would start to try to find one of those. Uh, I just think LSU will probably force a lot of turnovers and, I think that they'll be able just to pretty much push Georgia um, around defensively and and just force a lot of probably tough shots. And I just don't think Georgia will have enough to to score. And you know this this may be one of those games for LSU, even though they've struggled offensively, haven't really put up a ton of points. I'm looking now. I don't remember the last time LSU hasn't put up 80 points since December. So. I think they could hit that mark here against Georgia. So this could kind of be a, a coming out party for the offense. So Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of confusion on who wins this one. But the 19, if it's like that, seems a lot. I'm looking back at Georgia's schedule. Last time Georgia lost a game 19 or more would have been to Arkansas. That came at home on February the 2nd. Before that, it would have been to Auburn. On Wednesday, January the 19th, that game on the road. Then you go back a little further and you're looking at, goodness, it's been a while. Um, Maybe not all season. Point is, Georgia's not been good. Georgia has not been good at winning games, but Georgia does not get blown out as much as you'd think by by that kind of number. Yeah, I... I think it's it does, still. Are I mean, you saying it doesn't matter? They're That's one right. and eleven in the SEC and six and nineteen. I I don't. I I I see the trend there, and you know, yeah, they only lost by fifteen at Kentucky and sixteen at Mississippi State. And and as I said, LSU's not as good of an offensive team, right? I mean, this is just this team is not that overwhelming offensively. But I also look and say, well, I just I don't know what kind of Georgia team you're going to see after that South Carolina game, because as we mentioned. That was one I feel like you you think you can win and you lose by 12 and your coach clearly not very happy. Um, Skips so his he, post-game radio show. That's probably it, not a good sign. It can go one of two ways here. Either you kind of just have a complete flop here in this game or maybe you, you get your attention and you come out a little motivated. But 19, I mean, take your, take your pick here. I, I think LSU wins this game by 15 to 20. So – you know, whatever you think on that that strong side of the number, uh, I suppose. Um, I don't know what the number winds up being, as we said, but I think LSU wins this game by at least 15 points. I just don't. Georgia's defensively, Georgia's is not very good, and they've given up a ton of points, even to teams that I don't think are great offensively. Um, so I think that's something that I probably look at and say, 
I think LSU could have a really good offensive night here. And if they do that, I don't. George, it's not like George is a great offensive team, and they're playing statistically still the best defense. So I think LSU wins this going away. Okay, same time, 6 Central in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, about a six-point favorite facing Mississippi State. Uh, we've talked about how bad State has been on the road, about how uneven Alabama has been, period. Crimson Tide coming off a big win. State really – kind of in a, a back against the wall, almost have to win this one, uh, barring a, a very deep run in the conference tournament if it's going yeah. to make the NCAs. No, they're not even – I don't even think they're in the picture right now. Um, I just – I look at them and I'm not even considering them an NCAA tournament team at this point just based on they've had their opportunities. This is another one. If they win this one, yes, the discussion becomes a little bit different. But we've said Mississippi State has to beat a good team. And – They've done that by beating Alabama the previous time, right? That's a, mu- that's a month ago now. And you know, they beat Arkansas, but that just looks a little bit different based on where Arkansas was at. That was late December. So, yes, that win holds weight, but if you look back at it, you're thinking, well, they beat Arkansas at Arkansas's worst point in the season. So what does that really mean? Um, aside from that, there's really nothing of note. I guess the Furman one still looks pretty good, but – Nothing a note for this Mississippi State team. This would certainly be a huge one, but you know where I'm going here. How could I possibly pick Mississippi State to win this game when they haven't won a road game all season long? So, yes, maybe they get one eventually, but I'm not going to pick it to be this one. Uh, I think Alabama, just by getting that win, it wasn't pretty. Turned it over 24 times, but I just think by just by getting that win against Arkansas, as we said for both teams, you just kind of – you sort of flush it, you go on to the next one, and I think that's where Alabama's at here, knowing that, you know, it's a little bit of a revenge factor here, losing that game in Starkville. We said it was going to be a tough challenge there in that one, and Alabama did not shoot the ball very well. Um, that was still something, you know, we, we were talking about at that time, and they were still turning the ball over, too, at that time. But the difference was, once again, Iverson Molinar, and we talked about that for Mississippi State. I mean, this is one that I think will be close, just because I, I think these two teams are pretty evenly matched from that standpoint. But, you know, the big thing in that last game was just the number of free throws. We, we mentioned, I think, physical. We, we've seen some games like this, I think, between these two teams over the years. What was it 50 or no, 64, I think, free throws were shot in that one. Something like that, 66, 64. Um, and, and so I think this could be another one of those games because you do have two teams that, don't necessarily shoot the ball great from outside uh, at times. And so I think that's where you could still have sort of that physical type game here. But I'm picking Alabama. I I just don't. Mississippi State's been close. Don't get me wrong. They've been close in a lot of games aside from the Texas Tech one. But Alabama at home, different team seemingly. Mississippi State on the road, different team. Match those together. I'll take the one that's the home team here. Okay, Vanderbilt goes to Auburn. That one tips at 8 Central. Auburn is about a 14-point favorite, according to Ken Pomeroy. These teams haven't played this year. Vandy coming off a loss. Auburn coming off another win. How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, I really like the way Vanderbilt's been playing, but we always say it's just much different playing at Auburn Arena, and I think that's probably the scenario here. I, I just feel like this is one of those games, and, you know, They've talked about the other guys that have stepped up, Rodney Chapman, Studi, those guys. I mean, they've got to, they've got to have huge games. But I think this is one of those games where, like, Scotty Pippen's got to score 25 for them to have a chance. You know, I just yeah. feel like it's it's that scenario, and and certainly that could go, you know, a couple different ways. If he scores 25 or 35 out of necessity, because no one else is scoring, I think he's got to, no matter what, like he has to have just a huge game because I I don't think they'll be able to get that usual production from everyone else, right? Because we talk about it. Um, you have to remember here, you're you're trying to now score on Walker Kessler. And, yeah. and that becomes the biggest challenge for this team that I just, yeah, I think Vanderbilt's got to hit some outside shots here. And, and I think we could say that for any team against Auburn because you just know your, your looks at the basket are not going to be anywhere near as good as they are against other teams. Uh, and you're not, it's not going to look that way against every team, but it's just not going to be there against Auburn. It's just going to be really tough to get those kind of looks. So I think Vanderbilt, the good news for them is, um, I was looking at the number earlier, 
if you look at the numbers, they've shot at least 37% from three in their last six games. So that is at least something uh, that, that they can lean on here because if they can make shots from outside, sure, they can make this interesting because they are playing a lot better. Now, certainly I'm going to pick Auburn to win this game, but I think that's really the only path for Vanderbilt to be able to to make this interesting. Now, yes, we could point out the stuff that it's impossible to, to point out like as a preview to say, well, if this guy gets in foul trouble, we don't know if he's going to get in foul trouble, but that's always in any game. I think you could say that. So to me, Vanderbilt's got to make shots from outside. The, the looks are not going to be there inside the perimeter. And really beyond that, you've just got to, I think, hope for a bad shooting night from Auburn. And I think that's something too defensively for Vanderbilt. This is a solid defensive team. And, I think they've just got to push everything that Auburn does to the perimeter. That They can't just let Auburn get to the rim and get all these easy looks, and that's going to be much easier said than done, I think. So big challenge. Uh, I think Auburn wins this game. I think Vanderbilt can keep it close only if they're they're making shots from outside and, again, if they're pushing Auburn to make their shots from outside. Beyond that, I just, this is a Walker-Kessler game to me, yeah. a Jabari Smith-type game uh, with the size. And, yeah, I think – I think Auburn wins this. I, I don't know if comfortably is the right word because I do like the way Vanderbilt's been playing. They're, they're kind of a, a, a tough team at times uh, in terms of just how they play, and we've always said that kind of about Jerry Stackhouse's teams. But I just I think, I think Auburn wins this one um, probably by double digits. We've probably between us seen these two teams play as much or more than anybody in the league this year, and so I think we have a pretty good grasp on what they can do. Vanderbilt has, has kept these games close against teams all year. I just think this is a different animal. The Kessler factor to me is a huge issue because how does Vanderbilt get a lot of its points and, and stay close? It's driving the ball inside. It's Pippen finishing at the rim or getting fouled. Look, I, I, I think that they haven't seen length like Smith and Kessler all year. Um, I don't think it's any secret that usually – you don't get calls on the road that you might get in your own building. I could see this one going pretty badly for Vanderbilt in a hurry. And, and Auburn's also got some guards that can really get up in your grill and make trouble. And, and turnovers have been a big issue for Vanderbilt at times. It's been an issue for Pippen. Um, sometimes when they go to the bench, it, it kind of falls apart without him. Now, I think that's where Chapman helps him. But I just I think this is an awful matchup for Vanderbilt, and I'm surprised – if they're able to keep it within 10, barring kind of one of those, you know, clear, clear the bench and play the walk-ons and you cut it from 20 to 10 in the last two minutes scenarios. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that, to look at here, you know, if you're, if you're trying to make a case for Vanderbilt, as I said, I, I think it's the point distribution, right? This is still a team that gets, what, 36.5% of their points from three, 21.4% from the free throw line. The free throw line, that's, that's 25, right? 25th in the country. Uh, Three-pointers, 55th in the country there and 36.5%. They don't get much from two. Like, that. that's still what they do, but I think it's they have to get to the free throw line, and that's what you just said. You're, you're probably not going to get those calls that maybe you get in some of those other scenarios on the road, especially at Auburn Arena, and because you have someone as skilled as Walker Kessler who can, you know, maneuver his body to where he's not getting in that kind of foul trouble. So... I, I think that's it. I think Vanderbilt has to have a – I think you have to have – you know, they have to hit 12 40% threes. are better from three. Yeah, with say, at they, least They probably got to hit 12, 12 threes or so to, to have a chance here. Um, you know, I, I think beyond that, I, it's it's just really hard because I think the turnovers, as you mentioned, some of Vanderbilt's turnovers are just completely unforced too, and, and you just can't have those in this kind of game because Auburn's going to do enough to force turnovers as it is. And I just don't think you can, you can have those kind of unforced turnovers here. And um, so, yeah, I'm it, with anyone replace Vanderbilt with any other team. I think, you know, maybe minus Kentucky or I don't know, Arkansas or possibly Tennessee, any team that, you know, if you just, you can't sustain any sort of offense or kind of pull off a, a 10 0 run or something like that against Auburn, you're, you're, you're in trouble. Like it's just, when you're playing in that arena, you can't allow those kind of runs. Um, and, and yeah, I think it's going to be a challenge here for Vanderbilt. Order of confidence in these three. Um, I mean, LSU is at the top for sure. 
Uh, well, no, wait a second. I was, well, yeah, because LSU's playing the worst team, I think. So, I mean, I think my confidence in LSU and Auburn winning are, are extremely high. Same. So I was yeah. going to say, but I, I, I would say LSU just because they're playing the worst the team of the group. So that's why I would probably say LSU, but Auburn's right there. And then Alabama, Mississippi state's obviously the, but I think the best game of the slate, but again, I, I, the Auburn Vanderbilt one is at least interesting. If you have a Pippen night, right? If, if yeah. Pippen just goes off and has one of his best games, he's such a good player that it can be maybe more intriguing than you think. But I just, I look at the overall matchup and the overall kind of depth and, I just think Auburn has too many advantages. So Yeah, Pippen has about three or four of those a year where he goes for 30-plus. But yeah. this, to me, doesn't – if you're if you're handicapping all their games and saying, okay, where the where are the games where he's going to do that? This, to me, is probably on their whole schedule right at the bottom of the list. And even if it is, I think it it's probably more likely that he could have one of those games and it's because – no one else hits double figures. Yeah, you know, so I think that's that may be the more. more yeah, they score. They score scenario. fifty-five, and he gets thirty-one. One of those right, kind of something, things. Something so. like that. Yeah. All right. Tell folks about our partnership with Action Twenty Four Seven. Yep. Description below. Um, you will see the link there, and uh, just click on that. Use the code South Fourteen. Your first deposit. They will match up to eight hundred dollars. So, if you want to bet on any of these games, click that link. South Fourteen is the code. Baseball content coming probably this afternoon. Uh, More basketball content coming Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So thanks for watching. Remember, hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out, and we'll see you again really soon.